Good morning. I got to get rid of something first, so I have to get rid of this business first. Okay, who left this behind? <laughs> and then we were recovering for the, the last Sunday that we didn't come here. We were here, but we were just like out of it, <laughs> catching up on our sleep and stuff. And what we had done is, I think the universe just sort of picked us up and went twink, twink, and put us in a car and went, go, you need to go and do this. And it's something we had put off for a really long time. We went to get dental work in Tijuana. And if you want to talk, I was going to talk about fun and all those sorts of things and being a child. It's not, a lot of people don't think it's fun to go to the dentist and have your mouth wide open and exposed and being that vulnerable. It, it was more than that. It turned out to be an amazingly uh, great experience, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> and that's what, and it's episodic. I mean, I can't tell you everything that happened, so we're going to share this maybe over the the next couple of weeks, but we had a great time. We stayed with a friend of mine in uh, San Diego, who's now become a friend with Betty, who was very generous and opened her home to us. We each had our own bedroom, and we, shared, we had a bathroom. It was just terrific. And, um, you know, on the way there, I was thinking, uh, it, it was, it's been synchronistic because when we came back, actually, I'm just going to go to this part first. I'm going to zig and zag, and you're just going to have to stay with me here. <laughs> if you get lost, put your hand up. <laughs> Stop. What happened is when we got back, Maggie um, and I were talking, and on Monday, we all got together, went over to Maggie's, and we watched a video, a TED Talk, or it was a PBS talk, of a woman called Brene Brown. And she's talking about the power of vulnerability. And I tell you, it just all dovetailed nicely with what we just went through. You know, and uh, it was so cool because Betty and I, you know, we got in the car and Betty's got everything together too. And she's very organized. She's got all her, she's got, the, she's got her map. I got my map. We've got a picture, you know, what happens when you go to have your teeth done uh, in Tijuana, go there. Uh, somebody comes and picks you up, but you have to cross the American-Mexican border, and then someone will come in the car and they'll pick you up. And we had a postage stamp-sized picture of our driver. His name was Oscar. And so what happened is we, uh, we were, needless to say, you know, it's a big adventure. It's a denture adventure, a dental adventure, whatever, <laughs> for us to go. And we walk through the little maze, you go over the overpass, you're on the cement path, and you're walking, and everything is, you know, laid out for it. And, you know, we finally go through this turnstile, and there's a sea of yellow taxi drivers, and they're in yellow shirts, and they're all asking for taxi. And, you know, we're all free, we're kind of freaked out about the stories that have occurred, you know, about being in Tijuana. And, yes, those things have happened. However, I, something happened to both of us, too, and I'm sure it happened for me and it happened for Betty. It's all of a sudden, you know, you just have to relax into the moment. You just got to be present. And you just look at them, I made eye contact, and they said, no, thank you. And they're fine, they just move off. It's not like there's no intimidation there. And so we get to this little fountain where we're supposed to meet you know, and wait for our ride. And in Tijuana, they have a pharmacy. There's a pharmacy right in the background, and they keep their doors open. I don't know who's been there or who hasn't. It, it's been a long, long, long time since I've been there. Everything's changed. And there are people, they just stand there in their kind of uh, scrubs, and they wait for you to, they kind of try to entice you to come in and buy something. And Betty looks over and she goes, that's Oscar. <laughs> this guy in white scrubs. And I mean, really, he did kind of look like the terrible picture that he had. <laughs> she goes, that's Oscar. I go, I, I don't know. You know like, I don't go. She goes, no, no, that looks like him. And I went, okay. So I followed her. <laughs> I followed him. 
into the pharmacy and he goes behind the and he is expecting us to buy something. It isn't Oscar, our driver. <laughs> and I go, it's not him, it's not him, let's get out, let's get out. <laughs> so we get out and we go by the fountain. And this time we're laughing and we're sort of and then the driver finally shows up and he goes, Sam Dental, because that's who we go. This is not an advertisement for Sam Dental, although they're really good. <laughs> and I was really grateful for them being there. And so we um, he's Sam Dental and I jump right in to the van. And Betty goes, what's our names? <laughs> and I went, oh, I guess I should have asked that. <laughs> and so he says, Kim and Betty? <laughs> yes. And his name is Pepe. And obviously, uh, we found out later, Oscar had graduated to another job. And now we had Pepe. And they took amazing care of us. And they were wonderful. And something, you know, the whole time that we were there, it's it's sort of like being out of your natural environment and being, you know, a lot of the time if I drive up here, there's not a lot of people on the road. <laughs> and I had to allow a different aspect of my personality to surface, which was when I was on the freeway with eight lanes and people are coming at you like this. And I said to Betty, okay, I have to get into my A-type personality now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, was, I would look at people as they were driving and they would be coming this way and that way and I'd be like, don't you think about it, don't even go over here. And, and I'd go, sorry Betty, sorry Betty, and then I'd say a few choice words <laughs> and I kept apologizing. Sentence in the answers. <laughs> Just a few expletives that we won't go into. But what happened is, uh, because we were trying to be, you know, really careful about how we drove and we had to get to take the 15 to the 805, and just little things happened that were interesting to me that clicked for me, automatically clicked for me. And one of them was the fact that we were on the 15 the first day, driving down there, and we had to get off on the 805, and the, it, we're getting ready for it, and I think, okay, how, how many lanes do I have to be over, and I'm getting prepared, and then, it looks like the 805, and I take it, and Ben goes, I think that was the wrong turn off. And I went, oh no. And then something clicked in for me, and it said, so what? So what if you're late? So what? And I said, you know what? Something inside just went calm. This stuff that we do here, it works. It travels with you. I just calmed down. And I said, you know what? It's no big deal. I got off. If, we, if this is wrong, I'll just get off the next exit. I'll circle back, and we'll go back that way. And I went, there were a number of little things like that. They're not huge. They're little things like that. And they work. It works. And I went, oh, I feel better. I said, you know, for a little late, you probably would expect it on the first day anyway. And it was tremendous. And to have, you know, Betty with me to do this and to share the experience made it fun. Made it a lot of fun. And, and the vulnerability part is the part that, uh, this is a quote from Brene Brown, because she talks about vulnerability. And, and she said, um, she says, what, it, it was a, where she, she states that vulnerability is our most accurate measurement of courage, not weakness. And it says, it, you know, it's been synonymous a lot of the time that she says that vulnerability is synonymous with weakness. But, and, and for eons, people have thought that way, but it isn't. And she describes vulnerability as emotional risk, exposure, uncertainty, and it fuels our daily lives. And that it is imperative for creativity, innovation, and change. And we are always free to choose what perspective we want. And the more that you do the work here about that, it just drops in automatically. It just dropped in. I mean, I didn't have to, I just, it just something said to me, it's okay, you have all the time in the world. It's okay. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs>